Hello. Welcome to Mayo Media Network's brand new show that we're introing here to the 2022-2023 PGA Tour season, Skylar Hoke. And I'm here with my man, Ryan French. A lot of you guys know him. Monday Q Info. We're going to be introducing or reintroducing some of the 50 Corn Ferry Tour graduates as they begin the next PGA Tour season. Ryan, it's great to catch up with you. How have everything been going? I know you've been out here just playing at Hometown Opens, traveling across kind of the country, potential artist or I mean author um, that we're going out here. Man, a lot going on in your guys' world. What's happened? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Skylar. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a crazy ride, as I've said many times. So, yeah, working on a, a secret book I can't talk about, and uh, yeah, uh, super wild. It's been uh, it's been great. So, thanks for having me on. Look forward to talking to these guys about these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would also make sure if you're going to be an author, we have to look out for the best grammar police out there. So, oh, if man. any of you guys, I I pray I mean, the editor. God <laughs> speak to my editors. Holy shit. Yes. Yes. Um, but before digging into the guys, I know um, over the last you know couple of years, we've gotten a good chance to get to know each other and spend some time, you know, at mini tour events, at Corn Ferry tour events, talking. You know, one of my favorite chats we have with you, uh, myself, and Jude Deloy, who loves digging into uh, anything and everything when it comes to some of these golfers as they try to make their way over to the PGA Tour. But you're over with Fire Pit Collective now, so that's been a, an introduction over the last what 18 months or so. So if you want to give a a quick rundown of what you guys got going on there, as I know um, it's definitely blown up over the last uh, calendar year. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a it's been a crazy 18 months. Um, Alan Shipnick, Matt Janella started a company. Um, as most people know, Alan kind of broke open the um, the uh, Phil Mickelson story. He was writing a book, and Phil had an interview. So that's been crazy. Um, it's just been, I mean, every day is like oh maybe things will slow down at the fire pit, but they have not. Um, it's an awesome opportunity. I get to write, tweet, do shows about golf and somehow get paid for it. So um, it's pretty wild. It's been, uh, I'm very, very lucky to, it's a, I mean, to, I just rode in a car for 12 hours with Michael, Michael Bamberger, who's written 15 books and a legendary uh, sports writer, worked at Sports Illustrated forever. And for those that know me, I talk a ton, but I tried my best to just shut up and kind of soak in uh, all the uh, advice that I could. So it's wild that I am somehow a part of a team that includes Alan Shipnick and Matt Janella and Michael Bamberger. It's, it's wild. Well, what you've brought to the table, and it really intros into our conversation today about the Corn Ferry Tour graduates, is, is telling the stories of these golfers as they've come from a whole different you know, paths uh, from each other and to get to the PGA tour, to the pinnacle of golf. Um, you know, they've definitely taken some crazy routes, um, and it's really neat to walk through and kind of hear some stories from your side. I've done some statistical research to build into, and it really, you know, when I kind of got introduced to you, I think back just it hit me as we talked to this, a lot of this began when we all played outlaw tour DFS and, and kind of walked through those days and when got introduced to, I'm sure there are um, some golfers here that, that graduated that played in some of those events or that we were paying attention to for the first time um, and have now gotten to be elite golfers um, in the game. So excited to do that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through to all 50 graduates. Now, about 15 of those have already had at least 50 PGA Tour starts. So we'll, we'll mention them by name, but we're really going to talk to the golfers today. Um, who probably most of you listening aren't as familiar with unless you are following Corn Ferry Tour week in and week out. But these guys are making impacts immediately. We see these Rookie of the Year. I mean, Cameron Young, for example, this past year, these guys are making immediate impacts on JM. You know, Scotty Scheffler, Zal Torres, of course, you know, immediate impacts from the Corn Ferry Tour into the PGA Tour. And especially with the Fortinet kicking off next week's uh, start of the season, it presents a lot of opportunity if you want to look at this from a gambling or a daily fantasy perspective. Um, and with that off the bat, we'll go into the number one, uh, and this is the regular season rank we are going off of. Carl Juan was the regular season champion. If you haven't seen a video yet of Carl Juan swinging, I would probably suggest you do so as um, he's got a little, who is the oh, the crazy Japanese golfer, Hoi-sun Choi? Or yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got a little bit of that in his swing um, on it. Not as dramatic and a heck of a lot better player um, than Choi was, but Carl Juan was the number one um, 
from the regular season ranking. Um, he was um, on the, if you looked at the scoring average on the season, he was number four on the entire season. He was top 10 in both driving distance and greens and regulation. So this is a strong player overall and 25 years old with just five PGA Tour starts. Um, what do you got on Carl? Yeah, uh, I mean, you talk, touched on it a little bit, his swing, but he also has a very weird warm-up. He hits shanks on purpose in the warm-up, and uh, he played in a WGC or something like that, and Rory was watching him warm up and was like, what is happening here? Um, but, I mean, very, very talented. Had a great career at Washington. Uh, had a good year in China when he played on PGA Tour China when that was a thing. And then last year, um, he was well, well up in the points, but – um, Olympic uh, like success is very important to the Chinese government and uh, some say he didn't want to go home but he went home and kind of prepared for the Olympics so he would have had his card PGA Tour card this year had that not happened but he kind of uh, he had to leave um, and go get prepared for the Olympics that cost him his PGA Tour card last year and um, so I mean he had a great year this year uh, Despite his weird swing and weird warm up, I, I would not be surprised to see him uh, play well pretty early. And he's he's very super talented. Yeah, I would I would absolutely and you know say that he's probably a top five of the graduates when it comes to golfers that we're kind of looking at. Uh, one of the things that I'll hit on on these guys, I, I pulled all of the odds from Corn Ferry Tour finals. He was forty five to one, so it puts him in the upper echelon. So it's just kind of I think the books are of course paying attention always to. Um, golf all across the world. So Carl is definitely going to be one of the top priced or at least ones that have the most eyeballs on it as we look into it. Number two on the list, um, we won't go into detail here. Um, Robbie Shelton is returning um, to the PGA Tour. Robbie Shelton, I believe he won the second to last event um, of the season or, the, or that final one of the regular season where, you know, stud out of Alabama, 58 PGA Tour start, didn't take to his first um, season all as well as people anticipated. So it's good to see him climb already back into there. But after that, number three on the list, Paul Haley, 34 years old. Haley out of Georgia Tech has less than 20 PGA Tour starts on the season. Um, you know, he was 13th on the scoring average rank. Uh, I believe he's kind of a shorter plotter if we come from the way he plays his game. Accuracy uh, is one of the biggest components for him, but had a victory in the middle of the summer. Um, not as familiar Haley here. Um, so what kind of info do you have on Paul? Yeah, Paul is a really great story. Um, I mean, it's just rare in golf to see. So he won very early in his, uh, I think it was like the second or third start on what was then the Nationwide Tour or whatever. Uh, went, to, went to the PGA Tour for part of the year and really lost it and never regained it. Um, I mean, he was as lost as pro golfers can get. I mean, he was playing on the all pro. So he lost most of his status on uh, the, the Corn Ferry Tour. He was playing the all pro tour. And when I was saying he was playing, he wasn't. I mean, he couldn't break 70, uh, and it was almost for two seasons. Uh, on that tour, he hadn't made a cut in like three or four years on the on the Corn Ferry Tour at that time. I mean, he was lost, like lost as lost can get. When you are struggling to break 70 and not making any cuts on the All Pro Tour, 99% of golfers would be like, okay, this is this is time to to give up. But I mean, I think he was four years removed from you know, any sort of real status and went through Q school. Um, I put out a tweet about him often about this, but uh, he missed at first stage one time, I think it was 2017 or 2016 by 29 strokes. Uh, I mean, that is wildly, I mean, no one who has missed by 29 strokes has gotten to the PGA tour besides Paul Haley. So yeah. uh, really a testament to him to come back. Um, yeah, I mean, if you saw his game, I mean, he's a true-to-life grinder, um, you know, a small guy, doesn't hit it very far, and somehow, I mean, the entire year, he was in the top, top 10, basically. So, regardless of what happens, the kind of guy that I kind of like to root for, Skyler, um, pretty amazing that he's gotten back to the PGA Tour. 100%. Yeah, he's tied, I guess, him, and we'll talk about Tyson Alexander later, were the oldest two um, of the regular season graduates finals it's a little bit different because you get some of the guys popping down but that just shows the testament to what to what Haley's career has been um, and yeah no great to see him finally arrive um, at the PGA Tour after kind of that absence um, next up on the list um, one that is probably I would say 
been one of the more popular names. He, he did have a stint on a PGA Tour uh, prior to COVID. It's Marty Dew. Um, you know, he's kind of got um, some loyal uh, fans that if you see him on Twitter, uh, always rocks his bucket hat. Young, 25 years old, also from China. Um, you know, Duke kind of has a little bit of an all around game, very good birdie maker. Um, you know, and that's kind of, I guess, a testament to what he does normally. He doesn't rank high in driving distance or driving accuracy or really greens and regulation. He gets it done by just getting the ball in the hole uh, with less strokes than other people. So, uh, but he's always kind of delight and seems to be a, a fun character. I'm so excited to get him back on the PGA Tour. Yeah, uh, Marty is uh, Garrett Morrison is the uh, Friday uh, yeah. guy that like is kind of Marty's biggest fan, and so uh, yeah, he kind of has a little bit of a Twitter following. But yeah, very solid. Uh, it'll be interesting. You know, a lot of these guys. I mean, Paul had PGA Tour status a long time ago. Marty had it a little bit ago. Um, Often it happens that their second go around is, is a little bit better. So um, obviously Marty's very talented. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with his second his second time around. Yep, totally agree. Um, number five on the list and who I'm excited for the most this season, who I think probably even though the points didn't shake out for them being number one, um, Taylor Montgomery will be finally getting his PGA Tour card. Um, and, and Taylor Montgomery, if you look through the statistics, um, and, you know, you can see him just having almost every facet of the game, first in scoring rank, first in birdies, first in bogey avoidance, second in scrambling, third in putting, 15th in driving distance, 21st in greens and regulation on the season. So he's somebody who can hit it far, he can still hit greens, and he can putt and get up and down with the best of them. It's an elite combination to have. And for Taylor to, to make it back to the PGA Tour or to make it to the PGA Tour after being number 26 the year before, on the Corn Ferry Tour regular season and then Corn Ferry Tour finals. He's been somebody who's been really spotlighted among these conversations in the past because of how close he has come. Now, start out of UNLV, uh, he is one of those guys that played on the Outlaw Tour where I first became familiar with, with Montgomery, but very excited. I think he can make an instant impact um, on the PGA Tour. Yeah, 100%. Uh, pretty universal outside of maybe Will Gordon that everyone says should like just step right into uh you know playing well on the pga tour long really good super talented obviously has had some bad luck uh some of it self-induced but uh bad luck with finishing 26 on both the points so um 100 we will not be surprised at all if he if he plays well early or and often next year per, pretty universally known that he's super super talented yeah, he was 20 to one in the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, he didn't play the finals. We played the week before. So basically the favorite when they tee it up every single time. So for him, I think that's a you know, definite indicator that he is going to be probably priced the highest and have the lowest odds of the bunch. And if he's not, an opportunity to, to take on early. Sixth on that list, Augusto Nunez. Only one PGA Tour start for Augusto Nunez. He is somebody who was up there all season long when it comes to greens and regulation. He was number one on tour of those who had um, – enough rounds to qualify and third on that scoring average 29 years old out of Argentina uh, Argentina excuse me not as familiar with Augusto but it seems like he's a flusher yeah um, Augusto had an unreal year in I think three years ago in Latin America it was ridiculous uh, and um, oh, an interesting thing about Augusto is just uh, most of the guys that come from Latin America to the United States have some sort of backing or come from some sort of money a, a lot of the times. And uh, that's not true for Augusto. He's kind of grinded his way and um, has really played as well way into, uh, you know, being a name down there. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, he's really quiet, dude. I, I've talked to him and he's, his English is, he's, he's not confident with his English. So super, super quiet. But, um, yeah, a lot of talent. He had a Latin American year that's basically unmatched. Yeah, 2019 uh, on the Latin America Tour, 15 starts, 15 top 20s, six of those being top fives and two victories. That's about as good of a year yes, as, good. as you can have there. So excited for him to, you know, and for, for all of these guys to get some consistent starts and really see their talent tested. Um, I would probably say if you want to go side by side, you mentioned Will Gordon coming off of the KFT final side. But you could probably make a really strong argument that Justin Sa is the most talented golfer that is going to be now 
on the PGA Tour. He graduates from the class of Wolf, Morikawa, Hovland, and kind of that fourth fiddle there who did make kind of some flashes when he came up and played, um, but had to grind out the entire season on the Corn Ferry Tour. Ended up winning the final event of the year, which got him to number one um, overall in the season. That's a championship, uh, or that's a player's championship berth for him. He's going to get in the U.S. Open now because of that. Um, so a lot ahead for Justin. So, I mean, as talented as it came out of USC, um, ranks second in scoring average, second in birdies, fifth in greens and regulation. Uh, any more accolades to add to, to Justin? Yeah, I mean, you you summed it up. I mean, super good with the number one spot. will be able to make his uh, his own schedule um, and a really nice dude. Uh, I've told the story many times on Twitter, but uh, last year got an exemption. Last season got an exemption into Farmers finished 34th and gave half the money uh, back to charity, and he didn't have any status anywhere. So um, it's it's pretty phenomenal. He I had a uh, a funny interaction with him at a Monday that uh, Mark got through. I think is Barracuda. We were all sitting in this uh, in this room. Uh, the the course was closed on that Monday, and we're sitting in this uh, banquet hall, and it wasn't air conditioned. And air conditioning was about 100 degrees. And he's sitting there charging his phone, laying on the floor. I sent a picture of it. I was like, this is the Monday Q life. Like this is guys an all American was pretty widely known as like a can't miss kid and laying on the floor of a hundred degree banquet hall at a very mediocre golf course in Southern California, um, you know, playing a Monday Q. So good to see him is really, really good dude. Yeah. hundred percent. I think, uh, you mentioned Garrett from the Friday. Andy actually had a quote the other day uh, when they were talking about talent at certain ages where the best golfers at 12 and then are different than the best golfers at 16 and then 20 and then 30. Like Justin could very well be the best of that class once he's kind of settled into some type of status. We've seen him get into contention, obviously dominate the Corn Ferry Tour. It's a lot to ask when you're going up against Morikawa and Hoblin's game right now. But, um, you know, he's, he's only 25 years old and, and a lot of, uh, space ahead for him. Next up on the list. Uh, so this is number eight for us, Ben Griffin out of UNC. Um, Griffin, if you remember, he's got three PGA Tour starts, but one of them was just recently at the Wyndham Championship where he finished, I believe, inside the top five for sure, inside the top 10 um, that week in his home state playing um, at the Wyndham Championship. Griffin, um, I, and that's just a testament to, I think, the, the game of golf with how talented these guys are to have a spot start a sponsor's exemption and be able to top five that event just shows the caliber of talent he has and what a lot of these guys are going to have here. What more uh, on Griffin can you provide? Yeah, uh, nine months ago, he was working a desk job at his dad's company. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's it's great into insight into many things at that you know, he went to North Carolina, was very talented, had a great, great career there. And there's a lot of pressure and expectations on yourself when you do that. And when you don't live up to those right away, it's obviously difficult. He talked about it on a podcast I did with him. Um, and he and he just walked away. He was out of money and didn't want to lean on his parents for financial. It was kind of burned out of the of the life and went to work for his dad as a as a mortgage lender and um Kind of a wild story of, you know, his, some of the some of his friends were like, you got to go to this Monday qualifier. He got through. He was only there because his grandmother had passed away and he was in the area. So, you know, that led to that led to the next thing. He went to Q school, got all the way through and and now is on the PGA Tour. Um, I mean, supremely confident. I had him on the a podcast and I said to him, he the next week he was playing in Mexico, I believe, on the PGA Tour, he got an exemption. And I said, you know, what's the plan? Is it easy to go to a, a PGA Tour event knowing you have status? And he said, I don't think like that. I, I know I can win in Mexico. So I'm, I'm going to go win in Mexico and be on the PGA Tour. And he wouldn't answer the question. So um, that meaning like he, he just was like, hey, I live week to week. And this week I'm playing on the PGA Tour. And I think I can win. So great story. Obviously, um, I mean, there's a video of him. <laughs> he hold out for Eagle yep. and a casual round to shoot 59. They were videotaping it. I mean, it's all, it, it's been a dream season for Ben, for sure. Uh, the fourth, you know, I think it was a fourth a couple of weeks ago prior to the FedEx Cup Championship. So obviously can compete up there and is rolling, uh, you know, has the pedigree, played at North Carolina and played very well. So uh, 
I keep saying the same thing, but wouldn't be surprised to see him see him play well. Hundred percent. I can I can actually remember that Mexico Open because he played with uh, one of our favorite Flavin uh, uh, rounds, yeah. and I think Griffin like opened like plus three through two and battled like four under on the day. He was like a water ball on one and, and continued to show. And of course, he had a fourth place uh, finish at the Wyndham Championship. A lot to hang your head on early. Um, next up on the list, Ben Taylor. Ben Taylor's a name, he's got 29 PGA Tour starts, a little bit older, 30 years old, out of LSU uh, English. Um, Taylor's one of those guys that doesn't stand out statistically overall, but comfortably inside of the points um, from it. We haven't seen Taylor, I'm trying to think the last time we saw him on the PGA Tour would have been, I guess he played in 21. Um, I get right that I think the 20 season, he had a little bit of status, 21, a couple spot starts, but uh, not as familiar overall with, with Ben Taylor either. Yeah, I'm uh, one of my favorite things about Ben is super funny. He's played on our, one of our favorite tours for a long time, uh, Skyler, the West Coast uh, Golf Tour or West Florida Golf Tour. Yeah, yep. So, uh, a super funny guy, and um, the one of the oh, funny, I mean not funny, but one of the stories. I was at the uh, U.S. Open sectional qualifying, and it was an 11 to one for the first alternate, and Ricky mm. uh, Ricky Fowler was involved, and I believe it was Ben. I believe it was Ben Ta- Ben who uh, hold it from the fairway for Eagle to quickly end the end the playoff. So, yeah, I mean, kind of a grinder. You know, you wouldn't expect like a huge season out of him, but obviously, all these guys are talented enough that you know he can win out there. So, um, had a good year. Great to see him back. Yep, hundred um, percent. And I think it's very important that. Um, and we can kind of maybe even wrap up the show on this, but like getting out of the gates quickly for these guys because of the reshuffle that will happen after the fall, immensely important. These guys might have certain priorities as they walk into the season, but either a really good fall or a tough fall could end up shaking up kind of where their schedule ends up lining for the year. Up next, um, one golfer I'm actually incredibly excited for um, on the season due to his pure length off of the tee. Brandon Matthews finished 10th on the Corn Ferry Tour rankings. If you watched the video, kind of viral video, I would say, from the, the last event of the season, he drove a 380-yard uh, par four, taking a deadly angle over water that nobody else was even thinking about um, and drove the green on that hole. Matthews was fourth overall in driving distance. If you looked at him, he also just lights it up with birdies. He is not accurate by any means off of the tee, so he kind of has that um, – kind of uh, maybe bomb and gouge type to, in the game to him, but one early in the season and then kind of tailed off a little bit as the rest of the year went, but he had enough points to, to comfortably get into the year. So maybe a mixed bag for, for Matthews, but I know he's got um, some really cool paths. Yeah. I mean, Brandon is, uh, first of all, he's one of the nicest guys. He's donated a bunch of clothes to my uh, foundation, uh, always willing to help. And he's going to be super exciting in both, both directions. Um, as you can see from a lot of his results is either, you know, towards the end or, you know, or near the top. I mean, very by any stretch of the imagination, by most people's, uh, by most people you talk to in the golf world, the longest player in all of golf, he very rarely lets it go. We played him, played with him in a Monday qualifier when I caddied for Mark. And I mean, you just can't get over it. Like he, again, Mark is, pretty long. And I mean, Brandon would outdrive him on a good one, you know, 50, 60 yards. It's insane to watch. And he tends to let it go a little bit more, uh, you know, in Mondays when it's not a 72 hole event and he's kind of pushing the envelope. So it was really fun to watch. It's going to be fun to watch um, on tour. I mean, he, it's, it's again, he's the longest player in golf. So yeah, it'll be super fun no matter what happens. Um, you know, he's I think the, his biggest challenge is to kind of dial it back. I mean, he's uh, he's got to hit more fairways. He missed a lot in the one Monday. Obviously, that's just one course, but one one hole, one round. But uh, I think his biggest challenge is kind of dialing it back. He's if there's such a thing as too long, Brandon is it. So uh, it, a lot of irons off the tee, a lot of driving irons, and he hits everything long. But really nice guy, great dude, and he will be exciting no matter what happens. 
If I remember correct, too, Matthews was the one who uh, in Latin America was trying to qualify for the – it was an open championship berth or yeah. a major berth, right? Yeah, it was Argentina Open, and uh, he was in a playoff because the Argentina Open is in the RNA, um, one of the events that you can win to get in the open championship. He was in a playoff, and a gentleman with Down syndrome uh, yelled in his – while he was making a putt to extend the playoff, and he missed it and just handled it amazingly and uh, yeah i mean just everything the guy is very very good gives tickets to people all the time through me you know says i have extra tickets at an event um great at the us open i talked to him for a long time always willing to talk always honest and open just a really really good dude so yeah be pulling him for him for sure absolutely Next up on the list, potentially the uh, most name recognition, I would say, due to uh, kind of a Monday Q run uh, two years ago and finding himself in contention multiple times already on the PGA Tour. MJ Defu is next. I probably probably also will be the one whose last name potentially is mispronounced most. I believe I'm on the correct side there, but I could be completely wrong too. But MJ um, did have 11 PGA Tour starts. Um, most of them being through Monday qualifiers. So he kind of had that stretch run um, similar to what TJ Vogel did, but you know, he, he made cuts when he was Monday qualifying there. I mean, what his best finish if, or probably best remembered for um, holding the lead during the second round of the U S open. Um, he played another PJ tour event, made the cut um, this year in 21. He made his last three cuts to the season and also had two top 25s. Um, in the early starts there. MJ has a ton of talent, uh, sixth on the scoring rank, third on birdie, second on driving distance. So MJ has that in his bag of tricks too. Um, Going to be a big year for MJ. Yeah, I mean, uh, MJ has kind of developed late, but has become one of, you know, the, the group that you talked about. Uh, I think JJ Colleen played with him in a Monday and said, you know, I don't know how this guy hasn't won on the PGA Tour yet. So really has come into his own kind of later in his career, you know, was kind of a grinder, played at a small college, came from South Africa, and then, you know, started to win on mini tours, Monday a bunch, obviously had a great year, especially early um, on the Corn Ferry Tour. So, yeah, I keep saying it over and over, but uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him play well early for sure. And it's uh, Duffy, which is crazy. Duffy, and I yeah. said it okay. wrong for sure, but yeah. <laughs> uh, a million times. So uh, MJ Duffy is his name. Okay. So so Duffy, yeah, no, excited for him. And I think there's a little bit when you look into the seasons of some of the golfers had, like if you do compare him against Matthews, for example, like Matthews, when knocking out a win on the Corn Ferry Tour is such a, especially early in the season, such a comfort and relief to getting in a spot where you are – a few big weeks away from, you know, being already wrapped up early in the season like Matthews was able to do. Now, MJ uh, and actually both Ben Taylor and Ben Griffin uh, did not win last season and just were kind of the epitome of consistency overall. And to, to make the Corn Ferry Tour without – or to make the PGA Tour without winning and to be as comfortable as those guys were with the points just is a testament to how good of a season um, that they have. So, so Duffy was in at 11th. And then uh, I would say side by side with another incredibly talented golfer uh, and young, um, Seng Hyung Kim. Yeah, Seng Hyung Kim, 23 years old, out of South Korea. He was seventh on the scoring average, ranked inside top 10 in birdies, fifth in bogey avoidance. He was first in scrambling and top 20 in putting. So maybe a little bit more from his side is going to be the short game driven, but I would say from an upside, I believe he is the, there's two 23 or three 23 year olds that are graduating uh, from the regular season list. I would say we look at a sky high potential, potentially for Kim, uh, who had played in the Korean tour, I believe it was, or in Japanese tour too, where he had some some decent seasons over there with a few wins uh, leading up. So I'm definitely excited for say young Kim. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it was, I think a year and a half ago, he was playing Monday qualifiers on the Korean tour. Um, obviously was young, but uh, Monday qualified on the Korean tour and then won an event and then went to the, from the Korean tour, the Japan tour won there and obviously has done well here. So basically has played, once he got his status, has played well on every tour he has uh, status, he's had status on. So be interesting to see what he does on the PGA tour. 
hundred percent. He did play the CJ cup this past season and finished 32nd in that. Um, and if you looked at some of those exemptions that do get into those events often, unfortunately they do end up near the bottom of the leaderboard. So his performance there, you know, while playing simultaneously in the corn Ferry tour, uh, definitely shows his upside of what potentially is to come. So I think he's high upside next on the list. Uh, we don't need to go into him as much because he has 138 PGA Tour starts. But I think a lot of people are very happy to see Byung Hun and getting back to the PGA Tour. One of the best on Twitter, one of the best personalities overall. Um, ben Ann has kind of revamped his game, in my opinion, when looking through the statistics. He was third in driving distance this season before we've known him as kind of fairways greens guy who struggled with putting. Um, the putter seems to be coming around a little bit more, um, was inside. And again, we don't have strokes gain statistics for the Corn Ferry Tour. So kind of working off putts per green and regulation. He was um, still, you know, not the the best, I guess I would say. I mean, he was 36th. So that's definitely in the upper echelon of the guys. So maybe like, you know, top 75 percentile, which is a lot better than what he used to putt on the tour. Still a very good scrambler, but excited for Benny Ann to make it back. We definitely have some. Uh, you know, Hatchman, one of my, my favorite friends on Twitter, is a huge Ben Ann fan. He won here in Sarasota, so that was fun. Um, next on the list, though, we talk about young studs who could definitely break through. Um, Davis Thompson out of Georgia University, 23 years old, 10 tour starts, one of the longer hitters on tour as well. Um, Davis Thompson made his name for himself in amateur golf, kind of really showed what he could do uh, while he was in school. What do we have ahead of us for Thompson this year? Yeah, supremely talented. Played with a, a round with him at the Barracuda last year um, when I caddied for Mark. And, uh, I mean, the guy is supremely talented. He also does not say a word on the golf course. Literally, <laughs> a word. A single word. We didn't say a single word to us. It is mind-boggling. It was mind-boggling. So, that's my Davis Thompson, uh, like, anecdote is that supremely talented and didn't say one single word the entire 18 holes. That's great. Maybe a little tiger in him. You know, he's got that, that ambition already. He did finish. I remember in his tour debut top 25 while he was still in college at the RSM. I believe he has all those sea Island ties. Um, so went to school, obviously in the Southeast there too. Uh, next up 15th on the list. We talk about grinders. We talk about those who just truthfully uh, epitomize, you know, just being a, a journeyman in golf. Um, and it's pretty neat to kind of open up and learn more about his story, especially living, you know, probably within, you know, a five mile radius of where Eric Barnes not only was playing golf, but what well, he was stocking shelves uh, during COVID to, to get by. Um, and he had a really good quote that they were posting yesterday that he struggled at times mentally saying he just might be a corn fairy tour golfer, you know, for life. He just might, that might be his, his end game. And, and now he's onto the PGA tour, two only other tour starts came from Monday qualifiers. Um, talk to us about Eric Barnes. I know he's a favorite of yours. Yeah. I mean, has been a grinder forever, has kids, wife, and, you know, during COVID, as many people know, kind of took a, took a job with a grocery store would work at like two in the morning till seven and then, or eight and then go work, uh, or go work on his game and then go home and kind of start it all over again. Um, but even before that, you know, play, has a ton of wins on the West Florida tour has played everywhere and anywhere he could um, to kind of make it work. And Eric's kind of what, you know, I, obviously I hope Eric has success on the PGA tour, but no matter what happens, um, like he can say that, you know, he made it to the top tour in the world and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, if you look at Eric's history up until now, Although good and great mini tour player, but he struggled on the corn ferry the few times he's had status before this, like he shouldn't be on the PGA tour, but it's the great thing. It's what I love to write about and talk about is in golf. There's no one to tell you that you shouldn't. Uh, it's yep. the most democratic sport there is. So, and Eric proves that. So from working from in a grocery store to the PGA tour in less than a year is, is pretty awesome. Absolutely. And he came out blazing uh, to open the year. And that kind of the peak of what he did was when he uh, qualified through U.S. Open qualifying. Um, that was kind of just the, the bow on, on the summer of, of Barnes and kind of wrapped up his status uh, for the year. So very excited for him. Next up, uh, Trevor Werbelow, uh, young gun, 24 years old out of Arizona. Now, um, this is, again, if you kind of speak to the different type of seasons you can have to get through. Um, 
realistically was one where a, a few big starts got him in a position to you know qualify and, and honestly pretty comfortably he had a seventh place in the second event of the season in the bahamas um, and then he didn't and, and have another top 10 finish so he was third in the louisiana open then he won the following week at the lake charles championship and then to round out the rest of the season had only one other top 20 finish but again a few big weeks that you can string together, you are wrapping up your tour card for the season. Um, you know, from a Trevor, from a statistic standpoint, there wasn't all that much that was popping. Uh, so definitely somebody who clearly had, had jumped in, in a big couple weeks and, and you never know what can lie ahead with those type of golfers. But um, do you know much more about Werbelow? Yeah. I mean, uh, I lean on you and Jude a lot about uh, for Trevor, but yeah, I mean, he's got a, find the magic that started at the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, has really struggled and obviously not a great way to go into uh, your PGA Tour career, but I mean, he's obviously has some pedigree and we'll see if, what he can do on the PGA Tour. Yeah, he, he ranked, uh, I believe his highest like Wagger ranking was 32nd. I mean, he's not all that far out of school. You know, he had counting events in 2021. So young kid making the leap early on. Um, 17th on the rankings. I would say if I wanted to um, go into fashion and kind of the way that you, you look at a golfer who's going to catch some eyeballs, it's the one and only Harry Hall. That would be number one on my rankings and in my heart. Harry Hall, um, you know, kind of Harold uh, from England, UNLV, um, you know, he's got four PGA Tour starts, one of them being a top 10 in Vegas playing um, at TPC Summerlin, one of his uh, home courses out there. Harry Hall wears the the kingo hat he's uh, wears the some some polter-esque pants um out there he's got a whole fit that walks around but he can absolutely drive the golf ball very long uh when you see him he's really good with the short game and just again another one of those golfers who can fill in with birdies and bunches had a chance early to get a potential uh card last year kind of struggled down the stretch but wrapped it up uh, pretty decently this year. It was in a good spot going to the last week of the season, finished 17th on those rankings. What do you got to say about Harry Hall? Yeah. Um, I mean, just a legend from the, the uh, I mean, any guy that confident to wear what he does and wear it confidently and well uh, is a legend in my book. So had a great college career. Will be no surprise to, you know, see him play well. Um, yeah. So that's it. I mean, he's, he's a super good dude. Yeah. I, I, um, it's always fun to look back on kind of some of the, the Walker cup teams or, um, different, uh, I guess if you're not familiar with the Walker cup, it's kind of the, the Ryder cup of amateur golf. Uh, Harry Hall was on, um, that team in 19 and, and had a, uh, kind of a showing, um, out from it. And he's the first one actually by a good margin from that team in 19 to, to make any type of status. He had a huge leap that Alex Fitzpatrick was also on that team. Who's now just turning pro. Um, but yeah, he has definitely had the best run of success uh, of that bunch there. 18th on the list, Tyson Alexander. If we talked earlier, you know, with Paul Haley, um, you know, kind of about journeyman, you know, Tyson Alexander has three career PGA tour starts, I believe, and he is 34 years old. So getting on uh, tour for the first time, um, you know, Alexander, uh, when we're getting in this kind of range um, of golfers, again, it's a, a few bigger weeks. You know, he won the Veritex Bank Open. He had a few other top tens on the year, and those were the big weeks. These guys do need to find a, a type of consistency in their game um, to, to really continue to, to hold status uh, beyond this this next season. But um, Alexander is another one of those guys who's been around the game of golf for a long time. It's good to see have a uh, PGA Tour card. Yeah. Uh... I use a tweet about Tyson a lot, especially as he started to find success and win on the Corn Ferry Tour and now get his card. But uh, 2011, he missed at first stage by four, 12 at first stage by 10, 13 missed at first stage by 12, 14 first, 15 missed, 16 missed, 17 missed, 18 made it through. Um, I mean, he was, there's no reason that you would miss at first stage by a combined 37 shots in three seasons and think that you should keep going and Tyson kept going. So, yeah. uh, I mean, it, that the line between making it and players can develop. So 
um, it's great to great to see him have success and get there. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think um, opening up and understanding the challenges and, and the, the paths and the way some of these guys have had to get even, you know, not just to the Corn Ferry Tour, but, you know, that there's definitely uh, many of ways you can get status or try to attempt to get to the peak in golf. And it's just so interesting to see, um, you know, them and the, the mindset you have to have and the commitment, not only from you, but of course your family and, and a lot of, you know, things going to play for, for all of these golfers. So to get those um, cards at the end of the season has to be just unbelievably rewarding. Um, so we go to number 19 on the list. I would say another celebrated return here. Um, we get to have Michael Kim. Uh, he has made 143 PGA Tour starts. The most famous one would be the absolute shellac he put on the field at the John Deere Classic uh, a few years back. Um, to go from what he did there to then the stretch run of golf, which is probably more popularized, is you know how he just never really found it after the John Deere Classic until really this season on the P on the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, you know he was one of the the better players all season long. That being said, you can see in those odds at the Corn Ferry Tour finals, he was 45 to one. Everyone else who graduated in this range was all triple digits or if not higher, you know, there. So he came up, finished seventh in the Barsaw. He had 16th place finish at the Puerto Rico Open. Um, so, you know, he definitely is one of the more, uh, you know, tenured guys that was going to make the leap. So excited for Michael Kim. Um, but next on the list, um, number 20 is Kevin Yu. Chun An Yu was his name in college. He has 10 PGA Tour starts. Um, if we're going among, you know, guys that like to jump on early or kind of be a big fan of, this is our friend Jude's favorite golfer of those that have graduated. He thinks very highly of, of Chun An Yu, only going by Kevin uh, now, but Kevin um, overall, he, he had, again, kind of those flash weeks where he probably made a decent run at it just out of graduating school, uh, went to Arizona State. Uh, but he had a top 10 at the Puerto Rico Open when he bumped up this year, um, and then a few other top five finishes on the Corn Ferry Tour this season. Sky high upside for, for Kevin Yu. Uh, what do you got to say? Yeah, uh, I wish everybody could read our uh, group messages. I wish we could go <laughs> back and just search Kevin Yu and listen to Jude talk and wonder how much uh, money uh, Jude has won or lost on Kevin Yu. So yep. I know one guy who is going to bet on him heavily, but obviously a huge upside. I mean, the guy is supremely talented. So uh, it'll be interesting just to, to see. And I mean, you've talked about it, Skylar, and we can touch at it on it on the end. But for these guys down towards the bottom of this list, you're going to start these next few weeks are, are vital for yes. the rest of the year. So he needs to play well. Yep. Yep, 100%. And, and why um, he almost, I guess uh, I would say, pulled a Pearson Cootie, but Pearson Cootie actually did it after Kevin Yu did. But Kevin Yu, after he graduated from Arizona State, his first four Corn Ferry st Tour starts were 20th, 5th, 25th, and 2nd. So just immediately made that impact known. So had to wait an extra year to get called up, but he definitely has um, kind of sky high upside for what it is. Um, so next up, we got five more that graduated from the regular tour season. Uh, Harrison. Endicott. Harrison uh, has never made a PGA Tour start before, 26 years old, out of Australia. Um, he's more uh, accuracy driven overall, if you would have to kind of categorize his game. He did win um, at the Huntsville Championship um, earlier in the year. What he played, uh, I believe, the Latino America Tour um, as well, kind of building into the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, what do you got to say on Endicott? Yeah, I mean, uh... We'll see what he does. You know, um, it's been five years, uh, you know, came from Australia, don't know a ton about him. So uh, we'll be interesting to see what he was. I mean, when it, a regular season of uh, Corn Ferry, if you win an event, it's almost impossible to uh, not get your card or it's very difficult. Impossible is, is not true. So I uh, had a couple of good weeks and we'll see what he does on tour. Yeah, he did have five wins uh, in Australia in 2016, the year before he turned pro. Um, so ha has shown a, a pretty decent amateur career leading up to this. Um, next up on the list, Trevor Cohn. Trevor Cohn, um, he also will be making his first ever start on the PGA Tour um, this coming fall. Um, so he was... Yeah, it is tough to say because obviously a lot of these guys are incredibly talented. 
Um, but a few big weeks and capitalizing in the moments um, definitely is where they took advantage. Cone um, ended up winning uh, the Advent Health Championship, had a top five in Utah just at the end of the season there to basically lock up, um, kind of getting in there. And it was very tight. Him and the remaining four golfers, it was very, very tight on who was going to be um, kind of getting in. And if you guys have just got left off of the list, Cone's uh, best attribute would be his distance. He was top 20 um, in distance on the season. Um, struggled around and on the greens a little bit more. So uh, maybe somebody who can find a flat stick when he gets um, up to the PGA Tour. But he's 29 years old and making his PGA Tour debut. Yeah, uh, Trevor is a, yeah a good a good story from the standpoint of uh, one early in his corn fairy career I think it's like 15 16 and then maybe 17 and um, lost his card for the most part and went back to Q school last year and lost, missed at second stage but had still some status from being a winner um, and went to a Monday and got through and I mean it's changed his life so. Uh, his dad and I, uh, his dad is a, is a big Twitter fan and talks a lot about what, how miserable it is to be a parent of a player and kind of always have to follow leaderboards and understand that he was obviously around the bubble all year, towards the end of the year after his win. And so, you know, it just speaks to a lot of people are following along these players' careers. So uh, another one in the Eric Barnes group that no matter what happens, he will always be able to say he played on the PGA Tour, and uh, it's very cool. One one good week kind of changed his life. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, we'll roll to number 23 on the list. Um, Vincent Norman, young Swedish golfer uh, who played his last year at Florida State. If I had to say who I think from the bottom end of the top 25, um, who could make the biggest impact, it is far and away for me, Vincent Norman. And, and why I say that is, he jumped right from Florida State and got opportunities to play on the European Tour at the time, DP World Tour. Now, his first starts there, 14th, 5th, 61st, 10th, and 11th. So immediate impact and was one of the best drivers on that tour. He made a ace on a par four, um, a real ace on a par four, you know, <laughs> um, immediately. And, you know, you could just see in, in the statistics, he was – second in greens and regulation. He was 13th in driving accuracy. He was 24th in driving distance. He was seventh in bogey avoidance, 16th in scoring average, seventh scrambling. Where he struggles, he was 130th in putts per green and regulation. So basically, he's getting to the green before anybody else. He's hitting it farther. He's in the fairway. And as DFS players and, and gamblers like to attack strokes gain statistics, it's all about the ball striking because you hope to have that week where the putter finally cooperates. If I had to honestly give him some type of comparison, it's it, it's definitely a stretch because he wasn't playing near the consistency level of it. But again, he did not win on, on tour this season. He he was still, I would, I would absolutely classify him as the best ball striker in, in kind of the overall uh, angle of it. But he's got a little bit of what Zalatoris did prior to like really – breaking through and getting consistent. Maybe like the, the year before Zal Torres got status um, and was playing Monday, it's like, I think there's a little bit of that game in there. Now he's got a long way to catch up, but I am incredibly excited for Vincent Norman. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting because the, you know, the success you just mentioned on the European tour, um, it'll be interesting to see as most, as some people might not know, I assume people who follow DF, D, DFS closely, the Corn Ferry Tour doesn't play that many difficult golf courses. So based on his results in Europe, I would guess he prefers harder golf courses, which means his game probably translate to the PGA Tour better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he's a stud. So no surprise if he if he takes off pretty early. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, one interesting statistic I was uh, talking to you yesterday of guys can look at birdie average and kind of weighting that to the field. Of the top 24 guys in birdie average on the season, all 24 of those guys have PGA Tour cards. It's just who can go the lowest week in and week out on the Corn Ferry, and how are you going to, you know, be in the mix come Sunday? Because if you you bogey too much, or if you don't birdie enough, there's you, you just don't stand a chance uh, on the Corn Ferry Tour. 
So if we go into the next golfer on the list here, number 24 on the list, Kevin Roy. Kevin Roy will also be making his PGA Tour debut, uh, Long Beach State grad at the age of 32. Roy uh, definitely was uh, able to keep up in that birdie rate. We mentioned that stat. That's how you needed to kind of make your way um, onto the PGA Tour. Um, so Kevin Roy, let's see, on his season overall. So he was somebody who, again, he fought that that top 25 line often. And he got through to be this deep without a win. Again, his end of the season really got him there. He was 14th at the Utah Championship, 13th at the Price Cutter, 10th at the Ascendant, 2nd at the Wichita Open, 6th at the Advent Championship. So he opened up with a T4 had a tough stretch there to begin, and then he finished very strong to make his way in and get in on that last week. Uh, what do you know about Roy? Yeah, I mean, uh, 11 years, been at it. A video of him and his, I think his wife, or I believe it's his wife, uh, after the round. Um, I actually, he he's had a great end of the year. I actually saw him at an event um, at Butler National, there was a little pro-am uh, at the Chicago event and I saw him in his caddy and, you know, we just talked about that. And this was prior to any of his success. It's just like this life is pretty rough and uh, not that they didn't choose it or anything, Skylar, as you know, but like, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And uh, he was struggling and he'd been struggling for a long time. Most of his career had been kind of the grinding session. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is why I love the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, so it would be awesome to see him have some success early. Agreed. Agreed. I think um, kind of him, and then they, I, you'd roll it into a little bit, um, I guess, Anderson or Anders Albertson um, was 25th on the list, Georgia Tech grad, uh, 29 years old, um, 22 starts. I believe he did have, yeah, he had status in 19. So somebody we, we are semi-familiar with, fifth place at the Sanderson um, that year he did win early um, on, but had a tough stretch uh, to kind of close the season. Um, Albertson, from a statistical standpoint, didn't really pop uh, kind of in any of the categories overall. I'd say driving accuracy would be the one where um, can kind of be his name of the game. But interesting to see, you know, he definitely fought. I mean, I think he missed the cut that last week and, and was still able to, to make his way into uh, – it was a sweat sweat of a weekend for him to get his tour card back. But Albertson, uh, last one um, on the, the regular season graduates. Anything to add uh, for Anders? Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to had a camera on, his, uh, on that weekend when he yeah. uh, didn't get it, did or didn't get his card, ended up getting his card. But I'm sure he barely slept. Um, so, yeah, I would, I mean, nice, quiet guy. Uh, we'll see what he does on tour. Yep, yep. Amen. So that, that puts a bow on all 25 of the regular season graduates. Um, we were, we're going to make this kind of a little bit of a longer show. It's probably going to be in that 90 minute range. We say here, as we, we look into the back half of it, um, we have uh, 25 additional graduates um, from the corn Ferry tour finals, which again, those are either golfers who were 126 through 200 um, on the PGA tour side in the rankings there, or earned enough, non-member points to get into that category and then golfers who were one through 75 on the corn Ferry tour regular season list competed again there 25 of those 75 already having cards so 25 spots were up for grabs for about 150 golfers there down the stretch now i'm going to run through quickly the golfers who have at least 50 tour starts who um are qualifying in there or at least we have a ton of familiarity with already David Lingmurth won the second event um, of that season. Lingmurth, you know, long time PJ Tour guy. He was second on the list. Michael Glidzik is back, Canadian. Um, we saw Joseph Bramlett, Austin Cook, Nick Hardy, Henrik Norlander, Ben Martin, Ryan Armour, Nicholas Lindheim, all finished 8th through 14th on that list. All of them very familiar with, playing uh, plenty of times on the PJ Tour. Hardy being the youngest of that bunch. He actually only has 32 PJ Tour starts, but... Hardy, somebody who out of Illinois and, and we've thought very highly of and realistically missed more of his starts uh, because of a wrist injury that he had and came back um, with a vengeance. Um, Scott Harrington was able to qualify his card back. Great to see Scott Harrington. He was a story of the Corn Ferry Tour finals um, or Corn Ferry Tour season uh, a couple of years ago, being able to get on tour for the first time at 40 years old. Also rounding out that list, Bryce Garnett and Bryce Stewart or Brian Stewart uh, were able to get in there. So both those guys, 200 plus starts 
on the PGA Tour. So that leaves us with, I believe, 13 guys overall that um, from Corn Ferry Tour Finals that we kind of dig into a little bit. Um, number one, like you mentioned off the top, Will Gordon. It's great to have Will Gordon back. He has 42 starts, so he's somebody who we are, we don't probably need to dig into all that much. Absolute um, elite talent out of Vanderbilt um, and, and showed that. Um, from that dominant win he had, and he almost actually uh, was able to win that that second uh, event. I guess he finished fifth, fifth, and then he won uh, the the first opening of the Corn Ferry Tour Finals. But he was right uh, kind of on that line when it came to the numbers, 33, um, and the regular season. So ended uh, up with a strong postseason. Saw him with multiple top 25 finishes, um, including a T3 at the Travelers Championship uh, when he played there. So we said enough about Gordon. Let's go to number three, who I think uh, might have the most talent um, of anybody who's graduating this year. Austin Ekro out of Oklahoma State. Uh, he was top 10 in scoring average on the season overall when you're waiting. And he's top 10 in birdie average, sixth in bogey avoidance, seventh in greens and regulations. A lethal combo to have at the age of 23 years old, golf out of Oklahoma State. So we know he's one of the best recruits that they had, too. Uh, what do you got to say on Ekro? Yeah, uh, a classic Monday qualifier. Got into an event late and, um, I mean, really took off. Obviously, super talented, no surprise. But um, I saw him play in a Monday qualifier. I'm going to say the Mexico event in Texas. I can't remember exactly. He was in a playoff and uh, had a wedge into a green and hit kind of a half shank off of a tree and kind of ended. It was a, a three for two or three or four for three. I couldn't remember, but um, yeah, I mean, it hit a half shank and was kind of like dejected as he should have been. And I remember, you know, I've seen this a lot of times at Monday qualifiers, but obviously was one of the best amateurs in the game and was out there by himself. I think his dad caddied for him and they were just walking back after losing the, losing the uh, Monday qualifier playoff. And just like, Hey, this pro golf isn't exactly what it's cracked up to be uh, at times. And then later that year got into a corn Ferry event and basically just took care of everything that he saw. Uh, in that in that group of uh, would not be surprised to play see him play well uh, early and often. Hundred percent. And again, it's easy to forget. I mean, he was on that same team with Wolf and Hoplin. You know, some of these guys just they clearly you know might have not had the exact same talent and, and took to it right away. But long game wise, Ekro, um, I think absolutely can be a winner this year. Um, he won on the Forum Tour um, in, in twenty one um, early on. There kind of reminds me a little bit of what kind of Buckley did and kind of that, that elite talent that, that both of those guys um, possess next on the list um, of golfers. I'm actually going to loop two together. One was sixth on the list and one was 22nd on the list Two DP world tour golfers who um, I uh, talk about weekly on Mayo media network as we preview those events, but had earned enough points from, I believe the Barracuda, the, um, Bermuda or the oh it's blanking on me the Kentucky one um Barbasol oh, Barbasol yep. yeah Barbasol and then and Dean Burmeester's um he was the open championship in the Scottish Open where he finished inside the top 12 of both of those Burmeester long hitting um kind of stud when it comes to an all-around game he came through with two top five finishes or two top six finishes in the corn fairy tour finals in three events. Um, he had odds at that last uh, event. If you looked at this and this again, this is very telling in my opinion, he was 28 to one in that event. So that probably shows he's a top five player in regards to talent um, right now. And for him to finally make it on the PGA tour, 11 stars, he's 33 years old, South Africa. I think, you know, Dean has a lot ahead of him. Uh, he's gonna probably be a popular first round leader bet as he was somebody who was really, really good when it comes to birdies or better. And then Matty Schmidt, Matty Schmidt getting through from uh, Louisville University, young German kid, 24 years old, has been in contention multiple times on the DP World Tour, actually had held the 54 lead um, at the Barbasol um, in kind of his home state where he played his college golf at. So maybe that's um, another reason to, to know he's kind of familiar with some stateside golf and capitalized um, on the Corn Ferry Tour, being able to make it through to their um, overall. Now, if you go to the next golfer on the list, um, and I would say somebody who you, if I can relate Eric Barnes to anybody, it's probably Eric Cole. Um, and he's a legend when it comes to, to mini tour events. Tell us more on Eric Cole. 
Yeah, quickly about Maddie Schmidt. Um, Maddie uh, wouldn't even be been in the Corn Ferry Finals if it wasn't for Bubba resigning. So yes. he had enough non non member points uh, that he fell a little below what would have been two hundredth, and that's the prerequisite to get in if you're a non member to get into Corn Ferry Finals. Uh, uh, Bubba re resigning uh, got him in, so uh, he owes Bubba a case of wine or whatever Bubba needs, but. Um, I've said it. Do they owe you anything though? Because you might yes. be somewhat responsible. Yes. Yeah. If Maddie Schmidt's agent is listening to this, 100% DM me and I will send the address. Yes, of course they do. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, uh, obviously he was playing well and would have had a career, but this is fast forwarded to that. So uh, yeah. yeah, Eric Cole, um, his ma mother is Lara Bo Laura Baugh, who played on the uh, LPGA for 25 years. His dad is Bobby Cole who played on the sunshine tour has a PGA tour win. So, uh, obviously has a golf background, but has grinded forever on the minor league tour. Uh, I believe he's second in wins to the legendary Sonny Kim. Um, but he has 53, I think 55 minor league tour wins, um, had a legendary, um, Monday qualifying story when he went and Monday qualified in South America, uh, made that event, made the cut in that event, took a red eye back to Florida, drove to uh, his car, which was like locked behind a gate, finally got in, got his car, drove to the next Monday qualifier and got through. So it was like two Monday qualifiers on two different continents within the thing. So yeah, good to see him uh, get his car. Yeah, I'm very excited for Cole, um, who opened the season really strong out the gates. I mean, he was probably one of the favorites to get a PGA Tour card and then had a tough back end of the year. Uh, and and then he came through with a third place championship at the Corn Ferry Tour Championship. And so if you think that the regular tour top 25 guys that were on the back end, you know, just had a couple of weeks, maybe, you know, five weeks where they flashed top 20s. It takes one good week in Corn Ferry Tour Finals to get yourself a PGA Tour card. So you're going to get kind of a whole wide variance. I mean, David Lingberg is a perfect experience. We haven't heard, you know, uh, his name. He's 200 to one in the second uh, event of the Corn Ferry Tour Finals, and here he goes. He he won in strong fashion. Um, so I mean, he ended up kind of getting everyone in the mix on the last uh, back nine, but. Lingmurth, you know, you, you can wrap up a tour card in some of these guys with, with just one big week. Um, and, and that's probably to be said about some golfers that we'll get on to in a little bit here. Um, so we skip 8 through 14 as we talk through a lot of those golfers um, already who have PJ Tour status or, or, you know, had their cards prior. Um, I'm excited for this next golfer, actually, quite a bit. Uh, Brent Grant out of BYU Hawaii college in so um I, I had to do like a triple take when i was double checking and getting uh kind of everything prepped for the Evolve show Brent, byu hawaii yes absolutely uh, well known and and he is somebody who has been in that sony open um he probably pay, plays uh what's his name jared sawada they yeah. probably had some legend legendary yeah. matches in their in their day against each other yeah. um because the Grant's, nick Basin, um, nick Basin, nick Basin, jared sawada yeah. and frank grant uh, dominated many tour uh golf in hawaii yes that's awesome nick mason haven't heard that name in a while um well, but a, quick, grant, a quick a quick about brent grant uh is, yes uh the i mean i've tweeted about it a few times so i apologize if this is a repeat but uh four ball championship first one ever uh usga four ball he was 18 years old his partner was a surgeon in uh a it's whatever a, a surgeon and got called into surgery the rule was uh that you couldn't replace your um partner if it was within 24 hours um so brent played by himself and shot 64 and won set a course record so qualified for the national four ball um by playing by himself yeah amazing amazing grant grant does have a lot of upside i, I think from a a game standpoint of golfers who could have some of these pop weeks. I mean, he was 20th when it comes to weighted driving distance. He was top 12 for greens and regulation as well. So, I mean, that's a really strong combo to have. Um, and again, only four PGA Tours. He just has to figure out the short game. In his his brief PGA Tour starts, he's, his strokes gained off the tee are exceptional. The farmers, he gained 1.83 strokes gained off the tee in his one round. But 
guy had not been able to put it together when it comes to the greens. It was a great reaction. One of the, the better videos from Ford Ferry Tour Finals when he made, I think it was a, an eagle or a long birdie putt on 18 to secure his card. Just so you can tell how much that means to those guys. And so excited for Brent Grant um, to get through. Another one who had a huge uh, Corn Ferry Tour Finals um, and, and got through uh, after being 31st on the, the end of the list. He finished top 20 in three out of the last four events is Carson Young. Um, Carson Young only has one prior PGA Tour start. He won. This was an ex exact example that we talked about. Not impossible, but does happen if you, you win early in the season and you just don't reproduce anything else the rest of the year. He won the third event of the Corn Ferry Tour season and then really realistically didn't do much at all the rest of the year. Him and probably Akshay Batia were in that spot where it was like, okay, pedal to the metal. You know, you got to take advantage. And, and Young's came when it came to finals. But, um, you know, Akshay, unfortunately, is on the outside looking in with, a you know, another good chance next year. And he, he's super young. So, but um, what do you know about Carson Young? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it, it's great insight into that. I mean, Carson played at Clemson, obviously a good golf school. Um, but, I mean, just kind of struggled a little bit. And then at the beginning of his pro career and like was working as a as a, a clubhouse attendant at, at a club down near his thing. So I think a lot of people have this perception that you come from a big school and you're a big name and you're just going to like float to the tour and you have all this money behind you. So, uh, I mean, less than three years ago, the guy was working outside services at his club. So uh, it's not as glamorous as one thing. So, and a legendary mustache. Yes, yes, he says. He was all over the Instagram this, this past weekend and sweating it out. Um, so that was fun to see. Next up, um, I probably could have easily uh, looped him into uh, the the Dean Burmeister, Matty Schmidt list. Um, so we don't need to really go in too much detail. But Thomas Dietrich is is getting his PGA Tour card. Um, good for, for Dietrich. One of the Belgian bombers, him and, and Thomas Peters, um, kind of make up that duo. Peters, of course, um, hasn't taken on to the PGA Tour. Um, enjoys kind of playing DP World Tour golf. And this is, you know, Dietrich shot. Went to University of Illinois. Um, had a strong opening event. Event. Again, this is all it took. You know, we had a good Scottish Open. He had a pretty decent Open Championship. Did well in Punta Cana when he played. And actually, I mean, he probably had easily enough uh, points to get into Corn Ferry Tour Finals because he did fare well in PGA Tour events this year. But um, overall, he had a fourth place finish when it came to the Boise Open, and he missed cut in the last two Corn Ferry Tour events. So one big week is all he needed to wrap that up. And I, I think. He hasn't come through with a victory um, on the DP World Tour um, yet. He's been in a playoff. He lost to Minwoo Lee at the Scottish Open last year. But Dietrich, sky high upside along with Schmid and Burmeester. Next up. Yeah, I think on, the most interesting. Ahead. Yeah, the, I think the most interesting will be see how much he plays here. Like you said, he he likes to play yeah. over there. Um, but I mean, he played college over here. A lot of his friends play either mixed or or you know from that team play either mixed seasons or over here. So it'll be interesting to see how often he plays, obviously talented. Yes. hundred percent. And, and young. I mean, he's still, I guess, 29 getting up there a little bit, but um, yeah, no, I'm excited for Dietrich who, who fared very well um, statistically kind of in the finals. Next up, um, I guess if you want an OWGR, he's got um, his longer name. Uh, I don't. I, I, Tano Goya is how I'm going to go go by Perfect. his name. So I, I think that's the easiest way uh, for me to say it. So he um, he's got a long uh, history when it comes to professional golf, uh, but not much at all when it comes to the PGA Tour. He only has five. Uh, career starts that I that I saw there, but he won on the European Tour all the way back in 2009. Won in the Sunshine Tour in 2014. Um, he, I believe, has a Latin America win um, in 2019 to his name. So he's kind of played worldwide golf for a decade and a half now, you know, and finally gets to have a shot on the PGA Tour. Talk, talk about that's a real journeyman uh, coming yeah. up here and finally getting this shot. Yeah, I mean. Uh... He is, I mean, he, so in, he turned pro when he was 19, one, uh, the Argentina, uh, tour has, uh, a tour called the tour de las Americas. And I mean, he won the qualifying school by nine shots. He won his first start, which happened to be a challenge tour, uh, co-sanctioned event. So that got him challenge tour. He went on, like you had just said, went on the European tour to win, then went over to the sunshine tour kind of has played everywhere. A true journeyman. Uh, I mean, 
his OWGR is is the kind that I love. You never know. Like some, you have to look at the tours uh, tours uh, code and go like, what tour is that again? So um, 15 years after turning pro, he's going to start on the PGA Tour. He's only 34, but uh, in in professional golf years, he's he's pretty old. Yeah, yeah, very very fair. So excited for Goya. Um, to kind of make that leap over. Next up, um, Nicholas Echevarria, um, kind of a little bit hand in hand if we talked about kind of some international golf. Um, Echevarria, he played on the, the Latin America Tour, two wins back in 2018, and then has grinded it out on the Corn Ferry Tour for the past, primarily for the past four seasons. Again, a fifth at the Corn Ferry Tour Championship was realistically his breakthrough there. He had an okay season, 41st on the overall rankings. Uh, he has zero um, PGA Tour starts. So this is his first ever, um, I guess, of golfers who graduated in finals. He's the only one to not have any PGA Tour starts to him. Statistically, he looks to be a little bit better when it comes to short game overall. But Echevarria finally making his way to the PGA Tour. Uh, Nicholas, uh, nine months ago or 10 months ago, let's see. Yeah, no, less than nine months ago was, uh, playing at the big money classic, had a member, um, pay for his entry fee and finished, I believe fourth and, uh, didn't, didn't get paid. And, you know, that could have had a significant impact on his career, but started the corn Ferry season and played well enough to kind of keep it rolling. So from, uh, the big money classic, not getting paid to the PGA Tour in nine months is uh, is quite a, quite a leap. Yeah, I mean that that event holds a special place in my heart due to that was the first time we had met in person. Got to go over of taking playing hooky to go to a mini tour golf event. Uh, you know, it's kind of up there on things bucket list items that you can do in life, right there. Yes, and uh, yeah, you saw Mark with COVID. Mark hit. Yeah, I guess yeah, that was I saw about three holes of you guys. Yeah, he made. Year. He made uh, the worst three-hole stretch of his entire career, and this is Skyler's fault. So, fair, fair. I think I talked during um, Brett Dewitt's backswing. Um, so, you know, we we had a good few few days there. But I uh, did get us to, to meet Mark Anguiano in person. They stayed with my parents when uh, he came yeah. down and played the Corn Ferry Tour Great. event. Now, so so it all comes full circle now. But yes, Big Money Classic. However. Throw it all away. You got to pay the guy. So Echevarria missing out on 20 grand is a, is a huge, you know, impact overall. Um, 21st on this list, a golfer who um, I actually, along with Ekro, and I guess I can put him uh, with Ekro there because I believe right same college, Sam, Sam Stevens, um, Oklahoma State, um, had a good year, but a great uh, last two events, 12th and 28th was enough to get to final. He uh, made the cut at the U.S. Open this past year, really strong ball striking, made the cut at the Honda Classic. If I stand correct, um, Stevens was an all-pro tour player, right? Or was yep. he somebody he – was, he was very good on the mini tours. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it is really hard to make $100,000 on mini tours this the uh, all-pro tour for a while. And so yep. uh, was – I mean, it's great, great to see him out there. He's – very humble Add on Stevens. Um, so he was top 10 in weighted greens and regulation. He was top 15 in bogey avoidance of golfers who kind of finished down um, uh, or got through through Corn Ferry Tour finals. Those are some of the best rankings. And that is, you know, somebody who had a, a strong sample size on the season. If you looked at golfers just who had enough rounds to qualify, he was third actually in greens and regulation, second in bogey avoidance and 14th scrambling. So I think Stevens could be somebody, he was 11th in scoring average. So it was more of a, uh, a shame he didn't actually get through. He was 43rd on the regular season list. So um, just the fact that he never had a true huge week or a top five finish was probably the reason why, but making cut at the U.S. Open after open qualifying um, and being positive off the tee and approach, I think he's sneaky could be somebody who um, comes off of that side of the list that I am very, very interested overall. And he was 66 to one when we talked about those odds earlier. So he just, it's noticeable how good he is in, in these numbers overall. Um, we already talked about Schmid, 22nd there, Garnett and Stewart were 23rd and 24th. So this brings us to our last golfer of our show here, Kyle Westmerland. Um, he gets through out of the Air Force, a strong 
strong story uh, when we saw Westmoreland, what he made the cut of the U.S. Open this year uh, or, or last year in 21, um, made the cut there. Um, an absolute, you know, beast off of the tee, one of the longer golfers uh, in the field. And that's his, his real strong attribute is the length that he has finished ninth at the Nationwide and then 52nd uh, Corn Ferry Tour Championship. So just snuck through um, to get his tour card for the first ever time. What do we got to say about Kyle Westmoreland? Yeah, I mean, the first Air Force um, graduate to ha- hold the full PGA Tour card. So um, always great. Had to do service after the academy. And, you know, like Tom Whitney, a friend of mine, kind of behind the eight ball when it comes to uh, everybody else was playing uh, golf while you're, you know, doing golf uh, service and playing golf. So great to see him hung on for, you know, that last spot. And uh It'll be it'll be super interesting. Obviously, tons of people pulling for him for with the armed forces side of it. So it'll be great to see. Yep, one hundred percent. And um, that, like I said, we we conclude our list right there. There's a ton um, of fun golfers to follow who might have just missed out on, on PGA Tour cards. Also, those golfers who finished one twenty six through one fifty on the the PGA Tour regular season list um, are going to still be making plenty of starts um, on the PGA Tour. So some golfers who might have not capitalized in Corn Ferry Tour finals, it's not um, the end of the road on the PGA Tour just for them or this season. They'll still have a good opportunity to take advantage um, there. So um, this coming week, uh, Fortinet Championship, I'm going to be on with with Pat Mayo, uh, previewing our our season ahead or previewing the event ahead that week. And that's when we can really dive into the odds, the salaries on these Corn Ferry Tour golfers, because like we've seen immediately. I mean, what, Cameron Young's on the President's Cup team here? He almost won a major championship, almost won two major championships this past year. I mean, these golfers, I, I would just guarantee we're going to see at least one victory out of a golfer on, on this list this year and plenty in contention week in and, and week out. I'm, I'm truly excited for this group. Yeah, I mean, uh, great stories. I mean, as always, I will miss the – Corn Ferry Finals portion of the PGA Tour Um, uh, because it gives guys, you know, basically you have to have one good week and uh, you're on the PGA Tour. So I'll miss the the finals portion of 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 the Corn Ferry Tour. But uh, as as always, a mixture of young guys who are supremely talented, uh, guys who forever and some vets. So, um, I mean, this this event next week is super important. It's great that they had a week off. Um, in previous years, they've had to roll right into it. So yep. uh, hopefully they're over their hangovers and a little bit rested and ready to roll. Cause at the end of the end of the day, these next, you know, four or five events that are in the fall are very, very, very important to uh, what these guys are doing. Jared Wolf would be a great example of that kind of got off to a, a poor start. And then, you know, you're playing Monday qualifiers and not getting into events or getting to events super late. Um, you know, it's just not a, a good way to do it. So that first reshuffle is vital, vital for these guys. So uh, you can move up and down the list, obviously, very easily with a couple of good finishes. And, um, you know, Hayden Buckley is a great example on the other side of how it does. He played well at the beginning of the season. And from there on, got into basically every event he wanted to uh, within reason, not the huge events, but and held on to his card after he struggled a little bit, had it not been for this beginning part of the season. Um you know, probably wouldn't have done that. So uh, huge, huge couple of weeks here for these guys. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be interesting as well with 70 golfers retaining cards, you know, over the years versus the 125. Because to your point, I mean, a couple of big weeks early on in the fall, some of them literally were locked up that they were already past that, that fall safe number. And, and now um, – with the game of golf evolving, it, it's definitely going to be an impact. It's going to be more difficult for these guys to stay year over year. And is is that best for the game of the golf? It probably means that we get the you know top golfers in talent wise, or I guess pr- production wise, playing week in and week out in the biggest events on the, on the biggest tour in the world. So I'm excited for these guys because I mean I looked through that that list of winners. We did have two winners last year um, coming up from either fi- one from finals. Lucas Herbert won an early event last year. Chad Ramey won the event last year, graduating up in the Corn Ferry Tour. So I, I know that these guys 
will uh, make impacts early. And it's kind of our job from here now to now that we got the stories to dig in and which courses they fit, how they can statistically line up and, and kind of, um, you know, make the impact that they do. So Ryan, I, I want to say thank you for going through, through these guys with me. I know this is close to your heart and I appreciate you taking the time. Ryan, where can everybody find you at? Yeah, Fire Pit Collective. I appreciate it. Um, Monday Q Info. Um, thanks for having me on, Skyler. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you, the the friendship we've created and, and the, the endless Same. chats we'll, we'll forever have, man. So um, exactly. again, everyone, thank you all for listening to our Corn Ferry Tour graduate review. And we'll catch you next week as the PGA Tour season begins already. So enjoy, everybody. Take care.